Come on, stay there. Everyone spread out. Gentlemen, quarter turn to the right. Quarter turn right. Quarter turn right. All right, Sean Ray, as we go through these quarter turns, I'm going to pick your brain a little bit and see if you and can give us front. some insight on how this thing might play out as the defending champion, Flex Lewis, front double by, front is by. in his spot in the center, adorned by Kamal to his left and Derek to his right. Front and left. Jose Fred. Raymond on the far left and Ahmad Ashkenani on the far right. Aesthetically speaking, Side chest. Derek Lunsford has the best looking structure. But again, it's a little raw, needs a little bit better condition, needs a little more muscle maturity. Flex is only in this lineup right now. Uh, Back double bicep. Jose's not where he needs to be, especially throughout the midsection. And again, Ashkenani is missing a little bit of detail in the hamstrings and the front quadriceps. Which then leaves us with only three guys up there that this show is going to come down to. And Kamal is obviously the most conditioned, I believe, out of all of them. At this point, is there any question in your mind who's going to win this competition? So I'll try to. I'm going to reserve that for the open class. This one right now, I got Fletch Lewis winning this competition, going away into retirement by the quality of his muscle. Donald's and thighs. There's just enough things right about that physique, about that look, about what he was able to bring this stage. As the defending champion, it's going to be tough for um, him to be defeated, but you can see what's to like Your about favorite, most Derek and Kamal. Their physiques are tremendous, and just a little tweaking, a little fine-tuning, this competition could have gone another way, but uh, Flex Lewis, as they say, did what he had to do. Absolutely. Well, the thing about it is that, okay, then there's second and third. Thank and you, gentlemen. And Kamal is making you, a very Bob. strong case to All be right, the runner-up. Structurally, Derek has a better, more aesthetic physique, physique, especially in the lower quads. All right, well, here we go. It's the final pose down in the career of Jose Raymond, and, of course, one of the first in the young career of Derek Lunsford as his career continues to skyrocket. Flex Lewis has moved away from the pack on his own as the tradition of the defending champ. He will ask the other four to chase him around the stage as you used to do so often, Sean Ray, back in the day. Yeah, following the champ's not always the best thing to do when you can find your own real estate, but Derek uh, feels like maybe this is the last opportunity while Ahmad Ashkenani is establishing himself as an individual here. I do want to say, Kamala Garni from Libya, um, he should be incredibly proud of what he has brought. He is a star was born this weekend. He's an exceptional bodybuilder. A good case could be made that he did everything that he had to do. Uh, the question is, on a night where the defending champ came in looking the way he did, um, creates a difficult dynamic for him to get over the top. But uh, he is a big time superstar now in this division. And when this show is over, he has to be on any list of contenders now going into next year. Absolutely. And uh, Derek is holding his own on that back double bicep next to Flex Lewis because they're both relatively in the same kind of condition. Derek needs a little bit more upper pecs and he needs some more biceps as well. But Kamal is holding his own and, and represented very good here tonight while I think Jose Raymond is going to probably wind up in fifth. And, and, and by the way, as we talk about Jose Raymond's final contest, Flex Lewis has said he's not going to compete for a while, and there's no promises, there's no guarantees that he competes again. He has said he's going to walk away, so, he's going to catch his breath, he's going to reassess all aspects of his life. So Sometimes walking away, Dan, for a, big, a break, taking a year up, it might be the best thing for him. Sure, so at the, at the very least, we know we're not going to see Flex Lewis for quite some time. I won't be surprised if we don't see him here next year, <laughs> if, uh, if the timing's right, because he can wind up in the top six of Olympia, Dan. Uh, and that might be just enough appeal to do it one more time before you walk away. It's hard to make a comeback. So if you're gonna ever do it, you wanna do the Open, he could come and do the Open next year, and he could be in the top six. The Midway Award representing Midway Lab with Vice President, Ms. Catherine Colley.
Well, Sean Ray, here we Please go. Take the fifth place award, the check for three thousand dollars, and presented to Jose Raymond. All right, so in his final appearance ever on a bodybuilding stage, he goes out. In the top five, you can say he's gone out on his own terms. A very formidable, a very respectable showing. And you can be sure those two have had more than their share of battles. There is a tremendous friendship, a tremendous amount of respect between Flex Lewis and Jose Raymond. Tonight's fifth place finisher here at the Olympia 212. Absolutely. He commands respect just from the journey that he's been on. We all know how hard it is year after year to do this, Dan. And these athletes know that uh, Jose's done it better than anybody else. Presenting the fourth place award, representing Muscle Tech, is Mr. Cole Ariello. Please take the fourth place award, the check for $5,000 to our fourth place finisher. Amar Ashkenazi. Well, last year's runner up falls to fourth this year in 2018. And uh, you can be sure this was not what he came here for. He was not um, pleased with the way it went last night. And uh, quite frankly, I'm sure he's not pleased with this outcome, but he's taking it with a degree of class and respect, and uh, you got to appreciate that. Ahmad Ashkenazi is not going anywhere. He will be a factor in this division for the years to come. But for this year, he's going to have to settle Sean Ray for fourth place. He's class all the way. And trust me, he knows who he's losing to on this stage, and they can all take turns at one time or another. But unfortunately, you got to peak on the night, on the day, and it can happen for him tonight. Welcome back to Midway Labs, Ms. Catherine Collins. This second and third is going to be an interesting call out, Dan, because, of course, uh, we, we know Derek is coming up from the rear view in terms of his youth, but uh, Kamal is one of those guys that's going to be an interesting read in the future. Please take the third place award, the Olympia bronze medal, the check for $10,000, and presented to Kamal Algarni. All right, Kamal Algarni, one of the big stories of the weekend from Libya, he takes the third place medal and uh, you can be sure he did everything that he could to make his case. I know a lot of his fans, a lot of fans around the world have been extremely impressed by what he presented, by what he delivered here at this competition. As am I, I mean, the condition is what got him there. Doesn't have the most pleasing physique, but again, we know how hard it is, Dan, to get ripped up and hold it and peak on the day. Sometimes guys that can do that to put their name on that final list. Presenting the second place award, Mr. Zach Ziegler, executive editor of Muscle and Fitness Magazine. Please take the second place award, the Olympia Silver Medal, the check for $19,000 to our runner up this evening. Derek Lunsford. All right, Derek Lunsford is going to take second place. Sean Ray, a big showing for this young man who was kind of burst onto the scene last year. He stuck his claim to uh, what's clearly a fast track to success. And uh, here he is a year later. And the only thing that stood in the way of Derek Lunsford winning this title was one of the all-time greats, Flex Lewis. So tip your cap to, cap to Derek Lunsford. He is your second place finisher here at the 2008 Olympia 212 competition. We saw him coming a year ago. This is only his second Olympia showdown. And with that being said, the future looks mighty bright for this kid. A year from now, Dan, we can see him wearing the first place experience with James Flex Lewis is going to be experiencing shortly. Mr. Jim Mannion. And please take Derek is paying the attention. first place Trust award, the Olympia gold medal. The first place check for $40,000. And the title of 2018, 212 Olympia champion and seven-time Olympia champion, Flex 
Pride of Wales at 34 years. He has won seven titles here in the Olympia 212. He said coming into the year he wanted to win seven because his idol Arnold Schwarzenegger did just that. He wanted to equal that number and he wanted to exit this division on his own terms as a champion. And he has done just that. He wins this competition for his family. He wins this competition for his family and friends and fans back at home in Wales. And he wins this competition because he is the greatest under 212 competitor of all time. We're back after the break. has just been announced the winner of the 212 competition, the Olympia 212. He is the champion for the seventh consecutive year. Dan Solomon along with Sean Ray. It has been a privilege to call a very competitive, a very impressive 212 lineup. And uh, Sean, I'd love to get your take on the history that was just made by James Flex Lewis. Well, I can tell you, Dan, categorically, James has nothing to prove to anybody. He's already proven it, and Bob will interview him now. All right, here with the now seven-time Olympia champion, Flex. I know those are words you've been waiting to hear all year. You announced some time ago, Flex, that this was going to be it for you. You were calling it a day on the 212 Olympia stage, and no better way to go out with your seventh title. Thank you, Bob. Um, yeah, this, this year has been... Um, one of the most memorable preps to date. Um, and it hasn't been without its ups and downs. You know, as a, as a champion, I'm, I'm big enough to admit that, you know, I've fallen many times and I've learned from every one of my mistakes. And this year, you know, it's taught me a lot about personal growth, about, you know, just representing what this medal around my neck really means. And um, when I really put my head into this prep, thanks to a lot of people in this room, um, you know, I trained for that number one spot and, and I came here to defend, set the record, equal my all-time, you know, greatest inspiration, Arnold Schwarzenegger's record. And uh, I've done it. I've done it! You know, I'm a kid from Wales who had a dream. And that dream was to be on this Olympia stage. And now I, I'm here, I sacrificed so much to be here. And again, everything in life, if you want something, you've got to go for it. I left my family in Wales to come to America, slept on a sofa, or to pursue, pursue this dream. I know this dream is a reality. And again, like I said, I've fallen many times, but I've gone back up, I've dusted myself off, and I've learned from my mistakes so I can be a better person, a better human. And now I can say that I am the American dream. The American dream is alive, I'm living it. All right, Flex, with no better way to go out, your buddy Jose just did it earlier. We're gonna give you the same opportunity. You're gonna stay right here, center circle, my friend. Oh, you got more to say, okay. It's a three hour show, Flex. Uh... <laughs> this is my last show. I wanna say thank you so much for the IFBB Pro League to giving me this opportunity to do what I do, travel around the world, represent as a champion to each and every one of you. I want to thank each and every one of these judges who have represented and st stood in front of me and judged me again all around the world, including the Olympias. Special thanks to the Mannion family, Steve Weinberger, and also my coach, Neil Hill, of 16 years. This guy believed in me, believed in me for my very first show, and I am where I am because of that man. And again, living the American dream, I've achieved so much through bodybuilding to now have an amazing house, 
an amazing life, a beautiful family, all through bodybuilding. Again, guys, believe to achieve, dream big. Don't let anybody talk you out of your scores and your dreams. I was told more times that I'd never do this than I did. You have to believe and surround yourself with the people that are there for you because my team around me have been there for years. Again, I'm gonna leave this stage by saying one last time, one last thing. Each and every one of you fans, guys, you do not believe how much you motivate me. I know that sounds cliche, but it isn't. You've got me out of the, the hardest ruts through the hardest training sessions, the messages that you give me. I've put it all into this seventh title right here. From, from me to you, thank you so much, guys. Seriously, thank you, thank you, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, get on your feet for one of the greatest champions of all time, seven-time Olympian champion, Quince Lewis! Well, Sean, where they say the Olympia is about the moments, and uh, Flex Lewis just gave us a moment we won't soon forget. It's not every day we hear a 34-year-old talk about walking away from the stage. So I guess right, it remains right, to be seen, but uh, his message to the fans, I think, was well received because I know I have a son in that audience tonight, and those are the types of things that you want these champions to teach and to inspire. And uh, Flex Lewis, you have inspired a lot of people around the world tonight, and congratulations on your seventh and apparently final title. Living the American dream. Come back to the open finalist, Dan, and this is where the rubber is about to hit the road. This is it, folks, the last comparison for the title of Mr. Olympia. Let's send it down to the table. Big Steve. Thank you, Bob. Phil and Brandon, switch, please. Roly and William switch, please. <laughs> Gentlemen, spread out and hit a front double bicep. All right, the last time these guys will be prepared, history will be made one way or the front other. You cannot spread. stop. Progress. Bill will either win or he will not. And either way, it will be a historic moment by the time Steve Weinberger is done with his final comparison. Side chest. One side note, that is Brandon, sole brother number one, Curry, that is in that top five call out. It's a very unfamiliar place, but well deserved. I Back take out bicep. several big names, including Cedric McMillan and Dexter Jackson and Big Rami. We now see Brandon Curry making his first ever appearance in the top five of a Mr. Olympia Spread lineup. out, guys. Everyone take a step. Bill directing traffic up there, making sure Back double he's bicep. plenty of room. That's the veteran, especially when you got $400,000 on the line and an eighth Sandow trophy you're fighting for. You want to have plenty of space, Dan, on that stage. And right now, they all Back are serious. Friend. Sean, I'm going to just ask you this one question. Has anything changed in the way you see this competition from last night go, to right now? Um, man, this is coming down to the wire. Because again, we counted the poses. And if we're going numerically on the poses, Sean Roden slightly edges out. But Side again, Phil's signature poses are carrying him in this dog fight right here, but it's hard for me to stop looking at what Roden is presenting on that stage here tonight. I've only witnessed Dan personally one upset on this uh, Olympia platform, and that was back in 2008. Abdominals and thighs. Took out the reigning defending champion in the form of Jay Cutler. Now that case was 10 years ago. And uh, if it happens again here tonight, the question will remain, if Phil gets beat, 
Does he come back next year to try to make history? That's going to be well, the bigger question. We know what happens. We saw Jay Cutler defeat Ronnie Coleman. We've Your favorite seen most muscular. Dexter Jackson defeat Jay Cutler. We saw Lee Haney beat Samir Badu in 1984. And we saw Phil Heath defeat Jay Cutler. We've seen this story play out. So it, history suggests that it can happen. That's an impressive pose by the champion, Phil Heath. Right Thank now, I'd like to see Sean Rhodes fighting a little bit harder at this point. But I, uh, I think Sean's done enough, bro. I mean, I'm looking at this in real time. Yep. And I got Sean Rhodes right now with a very narrow, very tight upset in this contest. Well, here it is. If the, apparently, if the fans in the audience have something to say about it, Ruli Winkler is their Olympia champion, but uh, Phil Heath from Arvada, Colorado is here. He's trying to win the title for the eighth time. And as you mentioned, a tremendous showing for Brandon Curry, who continues to quietly and slowly move into the top group. Um, Sean Roden and Bill's dragging Sean to hit his favorite pose, and Sean is playing into that. Sean should turn around right now and hit an abdominal and thigh shot while Bill hits his favorite pose, which is his back shot. Sean, is anything happening right now that will influence the outcome of this competition? Those judges right now are just double checking to make sure that they've done their due diligence, which I can appreciate. And these guys are entertaining us while the judges are doing what they've done. This thing is being judged right now. And I gotta tell you, if you're gonna give Sean Roden the title of Mr. Olympia, you better make sure that you dot the I across the T's. But yeah. I can tell you, he would be worthy of that recognition should they decide to and go they that are route. chasing the champ. Phil Heath moves to the left side of the stage, as does the rest of the pack. William Bonac, again, another tremendous Olympia appearance. It won't be good enough to win, but it was good enough to remain among the very best on the planet. Phil is very smart in showing his back during all of these poses. That's his number one pose. It's how this show's won and lost. He won this contest last year on those back shots and he could do enough to win it here again tonight. So this show is still up for grabs as we come to the wire. In a few moments, we will see history. Either an eighth Sandow for Phil Heath or the crowning of the 14th winner of this contest. So the, uh, the feeling in the arena is palpable. There's a lot of intensity, and people know that this thing is very much up for grabs. I can tell you on the look on Phil's face, he's struggling, Dan. And he does not look as supremely confident as he did uh, in prior victories. Sean, I can't remember the last time at this very moment that we were as unclear as we are right now. We're both witnessing history, like you said, one way or the other. Award representing DPI Sports is COO, Mr. Chris McKenzie. Please take the fifth place award, the fifth place check, for $45,000 and presented to Brandon Curry. All right, another strong Olympia for Brandon Absolutely. Curry. And he moves into the top five, which means he is now qualified for the 2019 Mr. Olympia. Uh, he'll pick up a nice check and also he will command the status and the respect that comes with being in this very exclusive club. He's probably had the hardest run of them all with four kids running around, long uh, times away from the family over there at Oxygen Gym. This is the best he's ever done in this show, and I'm sure we'll see more in the future. Presenting the fourth place award, representing MHP, the CEO, Gerard Dante. This will be interesting, Dan. Roley and William did not stand next to each other and get compared. Looking in the eyes of the Please champion, the gotta wonder what he's award, thinking right now. Place, first, let's hear who finishes fourth place. And presented to William the Conqueror, Bonin. As predicted yesterday, Dan, I thought he came in a little heavy. He dropped one notch, which is not a slap in anybody's face, but he's a little too heavy on this stage. If he dries up a little bit more, drops a little bit of weight, and that's hard to say, I think he'll streamline this physique and be right back in the hunt again. But right now, he's remaining in the top four, and he came off an Arnold Classic Championship. That's not an easy thing to do, and a year ago, he didn't have to deal with that. And then there were three, the top three bodybuilders on the planet, Phil Heath, Willie Winkler, and Sean Roden, 
await the announcement of third place. Rolly is in a very unfamiliar Presenting the third position place award at this moment. It's Kevin Kay. We take the third place award, the Olympia Bronze Medal, the check for $100,000. To your third place finisher, Rolly Winkler. All right, Sean Ray, your people's champion is the number three bodybuilder in the world. A terrific Olympia showing for Rolly as he continues to fine tune that massive physique, those freaky proportions, and he has turned it in to what is now one of the top physiques on the planet. Rolly Winkler is your third place finisher. With $100,000 to show for it, man, that was earned the hard way. Rolly Winkler, very deserving, very popular, and his status and his stock in this industry has just gone up twofold. And then, Dan, there were two. If I could please have Sean Roden and Phil Heath on the center line, please. We've seen this play out before as Phil Heath held off a fast charge in Sean Roden several years back. And now we are going to see the rubber match. And what's at stake? The runner up will win $150,000. The winner will win $400,000. And in Olympia tradition, Bob Chicarilla will probably Ladies announce the, the winner. That's right. Will be your 2018 Mr. Olympia. The first place award, representing Midway Labs, is Mr. Wilton Kali and Catherine Kali, and our IFBB Pro League president, Mr. Jim Mannion. I will now announce the winner of the 2018 Olympia. Please take the Sandow Trophy. The Olympia gold medal, the check for $400,000, and the title of 2018, Mr. Olympia. To our winner, and new Olympia champion. Ooh, there it is. It has happened in Las Vegas. For just the 14th time, we have a new Mr. Olympia. The defending champion has been knocked out. Sean Roden is your 2018 Olympia champion. Phil Heath's run, at least for now, will end at seven in one of the more improbable developments. Phil Heath stands at center stage congratulating the winner Sean Roden, and I gotta tell you, Sean Ray, coming into this weekend, there weren't many people that would have ever dared to predict this outcome. Absolutely, and I wasn't one of those guys that thought that for two seconds. However, I talked to a fellow professional bodybuilding friend of mine from Italy, Gianrico Pica, who saw Sean Roden on Wednesday night, the day I arrived. He has a show coming up, the Amateur Olympia in Italy next weekend. He said he saw Sean Roden and Sean Roden was gonna win this show, and I looked him in the eye, and I could not believe what he was saying. Sean Roden has accomplished what no other man has in over 10 years. Our coverage is gonna continue after the break. Stick around, guys.
right, we are back. An historic night here in Las Vegas. Sean Roden has just been crowned Mr. Olympia in one of the more improbable developments in the history of this contest. Very few people saw this coming. There was an expectation that some guys would push Phil to the limit. Sean Roden was not on many of those lists, especially after what played out last year where he finished fifth. And uh, here he is, the final man standing, and Phil Heath's run ends at seven, where he will, he will remain tied with the great Arnold Schwarzenegger. Bob Chick just asked, did the judges get it right? And to a resounding applause, they said yes. I believe Sean's waiting for his kid to come on stage uh -oh. to share the moment. Sean Roden a year ago had a kid, and uh, a couple years ago, I should say, which takes your eye off the prize, and there she is. That dress has got all kinds of stuff on it now, but it's got that gold medal, and well, she'll remember this moment, moment years to, to come. And a reminder, do not put your kids in white when you have pro on. I know, sweetie, I feel the same way. Sean Roden, you're the new Mr. Olympia. Wow, what a great fight, Sean. Everybody can see yesterday that you brought it. You brought your A game and you came here to... What's the matter, sweetie? You wanna say something? It's Daddy. You said hi, Daddy. Hi, Nana. Guess what? Daddy's Mr. Olympia. Hi, Nana. She said congratulations. Here's something you can play with, look at. Wow, look at that. Isn't that cool? All right, let's talk with the champ. Sean, congratulations, my friend. You have done the unthinkable. You have beaten the great and seven-time Olympia champion, Phil Heath. You believed in yourself. You told everybody you were not messing around. You came here to win, and you are the new Mr. Olympia. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for coming out and showing support to all these amazing athletes. Uh, Jim Mannion, AMI, Steve White Merger, all these wonderful judges. Thank you guys so much to my family for making it out here. Man, it's, it's, it's been a long journey. It's been a long journey and I'm thankful for today and yesterday that I was able to fight my way and something that I believe that I was going to be number 14. And you are number 14. Only 14 men in history since 1965 have held this title. Some of those great names that you know, of course. And you just beat a hell of a champion in Phil Heath, the seven-time champion. Nobody thought he could be beaten, but you did it. Yeah, I've been watching Phil since 2012, taking a lot of notes and I know people might laugh at me when I say that, hey, one day I was going to be Mr. Olympia, but here I am, folks. <laughs> Love it. This was probably my hardest prep ever, but I wanted it so bad. I'm thankful that I'm here. Well, Sean, look at that Sandow trophy down there. That's going to look really nice up on that mantle, isn't it? I haven't even think that far, you know. <laughs> this past couple of days has just been a roller coaster. You know, I have a great supporting cast, Chris Cito, Psycho Fitness. My training partner make it to the Olympia for the first time, stamina. And I'm gonna tell you, man, they beat the crap out of me this past couple of months just to get here. And to all you fans out here for your support, You know, every time I look and I hear someone said, Sean is too small, Sean is spending too much time with his family, Sean looked like he's retired, but it's okay. We had a game plan and we stuck to it, and we found our way to come here. We did everything that I possibly could have can to look good this weekend. 
Well, Sean, you certainly did more than look good. You look great, and the judge is certainly rewarding that with an Olympia victory. Take, take me through yesterday. After pre-judging, what were your feelings after you stepped off this stage? To be honest, man, I walked out of here yesterday, and I looked at Chris and I said, it's only Friday. You know, I know a lot of people had me, you know, winning or a close second, but I just looked at Chris and said, it's only Friday, Chris. We still have Saturday, let's just focus on today. And that's what we did, one day at a time. What did you think when you came here tonight for the final, Sean? Did you think you had it? Did you think Phil was gonna eat you? We all know Phil comes back better on Saturday, so you knew you had a battle uh, coming up tonight, but what were your feelings? Did you think you had it? Listen, guys, Phil is no slouch. I've been chasing him since 2012, so I know in the back of my mind, I'm like, hey, you know what? He's missed a Saturday night. He could come in here and he could look his all-time best. But again, I looked at Chris Cedar and Chris said, hey, you know what, Sean? You'll be better than you were yesterday. And if that man believe in me, I'm good. All right, Sean Roden. Right here in the center, I want you to hit your first pose as your new 2018 Mr. Olympia. I'll have you know that it was not easy to get back, Sean. Well, there he is, ladies and gentlemen, 14. I don't even want to use the word lucky. This was earned Dan the hard way. And please help me in celebrating your new Olympia champion, what's the draw, Sean Roden. Sean Roden, as we've known through the years, is a man of few words. He lets his physique do all the talking. He did just that tonight. And um, it took 54 years. So we have ourselves a 14th champion. By way of Jamaica, this is a guy that took seven years off of bodybuilding to take care for his eight ailing father who passed away, came back, turned pro by winning the North America Championships, and slowly started to serve notice by winning the Arnold Classic over in Spain. Uh, just came out, got second runner up here, and now he became the Buster Douglas of modern day bodybuilding by knocking out the reigning defending champion. And here's our top five leaderboard from the Mr. Olympia. Sean Roden wins it. He defeats the defending champion, Phil Heath and Rudy Winkler. Of course, what we what we are learning now, uh, William Bonak uh, in fourth and Brandon Curry rounds out the top five. And we're waiting for those other scores to come in so we can round out the top 10. We might have to wait a little bit later in the program to get that. But first things first, Sean Roden has defeated Phil Heath in a Stunning turn of events. Not so stunning if you consider the pace of the show, but stunning when you consider what we walked into as we arrived here in Vegas. There were few, very few people that ever considered the possibility that Sean Roden, after last year's fifth place finish, was gonna come in well above 40 years old and win this competition. But uh, a tremendous event, and we're gonna take a quick break. Backstage, Dan Solomon trying to get an audience with our reigning champion for 2018, Sean. Oh, Flex Lewis, our 212. This gentleman to my right has just been one part of all the history that has been made tonight here at the 2018 Olympia. And uh, Flex Lewis, congratulations. You are the 
212 champion once again for the seventh time. Wow, well, it's uh, very surreal again. Uh, there was an execution plan made 20 weeks out, and of course, my body was telling me at 226, jump on stage. And um, we just had to rechange the plan. And getting here today has come without its own sacrifice. And from everybody, from the family, all to see me fulfill my dream. My coach Neil Hill doing what he does is absolutely phenomenal. And again, I'm lost for words. I think I left everything up on stage and what I said tonight. Well, it's unusual at 34 years old that we hear somebody step to center stage and talk about the fact that they are walking away. And you'll have to forgive my skepticism a little bit because when we look at your physique, when we look at your energy and where you're at in your life, that you have still a lot more to do as a bodybuilder. So I'm gonna challenge you a little bit on that and I'm gonna question this decision. Are you sure now is the time to step away? And give us some clarity on this plan. Are you stepping away from this division? Are you stepping away from the sport? Is there a bigger picture plan that you want to fill us in on? Well, as you know me, Dan, I've, I, I always have a plan on things and I'm all about breaking down barriers and opening new doors. Um, I've, what I've achieved in this sport, you know, as, as, as a kid, if I thought about it, it blows my mind, you know, but I dream big. And as a 212 athlete, you'll never hear that name being called out again on stage. But for the future, um, I think there's going to be definitely uh, a time and a place where I definitely jump back on stage as an open class guy. But it's got to be done right. It's got to be done in the pace that, that allows me to grow, mature in the right areas um, without rushing. And that being said, you know, I'm, I've got a lot of irons in the fire and I'm ready to, to open a lot of doors that bodybuilders haven't had the chance to yet. And I've already done that this year. So I'm excited to explore new avenues. Um, like I said, open doors for the whole fitness industry into what I'm doing. And there's a lot of things that I need to fulfill from the personal standpoint uh, before I even think about opening the door to standing on the open stage. Well, I'll tell you this. I'll let you put a bookmark in your career, at least for now. We're not going to let you off the hook that easily. But I had a son who was in the audience tonight. And when I heard you talk about never giving up on your dreams and inspiring fans really around the world the way you do that's such a big part of your story it's such a big part of your message and you've done such a great job of serving as a tremendous ambassador to the sport so flex i applaud you for that and and, and what you are is so much more than a physique you are somebody that has brought an important message and important energy to a sport that oftentimes needs that positivity yeah and again bodybuilders have been given this cliche right and when I got into this bottle long before I became the champion, I wanted to break that stereotype. And that is a, a, still a personal goal of mine. I've broken these barriers. And again, with, with where I am in life right now, it's about look, having the mainstream look at a champion with a different mindset and a different eyes eye. And, and again, representing the sport on stage and off. So the next generation, all these new young blood coming through, I put the bar up high. And again, representing on stage and off is, is what this medal means and has them for me be long before the medal was around my, my neck and aspiring people, the young kids like yourself. And I do live by that motto, dream big. And everybody out there should dream big, never give up on your goals. And again, just have that, that belief that whatever you put your mind to, you can achieve. And for Flex Lewis, his dreams came true seven times. Your 2018 under 212 champion, Congratulations, Flex. Well done. We're going to go ahead and bring in somebody else who has just made a bit of history. You know, we give these interviews every year where we get to stand here and talk to the winner of the Mr. Olympia. It's one of the great privileges, one of the great things that I get to do each and every year is talk to the number one bodybuilder in the world in the moments after an Olympia is settled. And I'm not going to lie to you, Sean, never in a million years did I imagine that I'd be standing here talking to you as the greatest champion. Having said that, when you walked out tonight and what you presented last night and again tonight, it was extraordinary. The fans around the world agreed with the decision. You delivered something remarkable. You bounced back from 
year ago where you were off and you talked about some of those trials and tribulations going into last year's competition. And in one of the more improbable turn of events, you have won a Sandow Trophy. You are the 14th man to do so. So for that, we congratulate you on an extraordinary achievement. Thank you. Um, it's, wow, I haven't sunk in this yet, <laughs> but um, it's been a long, long year from last Olympia, broken jaw, mouth wired shut, had to eat to a straw, had to blend all my food. Still able to fight my way to the top five last year and and I started my prep this year for the Arnold Classic, ended up with two bleeding ulcer and you know, eight blood transfusion, I had to pull out the last couple of weeks. And I wanted to make a statement for this year's Olympia. And when I t told people it's going to win the Olympia this year, a lot of people kind of laughed at me because I looked like I was uh, about to be retired. <laughs> but I have a great coach, Chris Aceto, great trainer. Um, Psycho Fitness 21, and a training partner that will never let me quit. Plus, my family was always like, hey, you know what? Just focus. Let's get down to brass taxes here. You beat a really good champion tonight. You beat a great champion. Phil Heath has done remarkably over the last seven years winning this title, and uh, he came in very confident this weekend. He thought he had this thing coming into the competition. You were very confident, as we saw from the very early phases of the weekend. You came out here, took care of business. Talk about not what it feels like to be Mr. Olympia. Talk about what it feels like to defeat the great Phil Heath. You know, I've been on stage with Phil since 2011. Um, it's a great feeling, man, because, again, Phil is no slouch. You have Dexter Jackson, former Mr. Olympia also, that were on stage. And I know these guys are two champion, and they worked their butt off, and everybody was going to come in here firing an all cylinder. I saw uh, Roly Winkler and William Bonac move up the chain last year, this year. One thing that my coach told me is that Sean, just stay in your own lane. Don't worry about what anybody else is doing, just focus on what you need to do. The only thing that we need to do here for this year Olympia is to bring the best Sean Roden ever. Because if you bring the best Sean Roden ever, it's gonna be very hard for anyone to beat you. And I believe. You're also one of the oldest men to win this competition for the first time. Um, I think Chris Dickerson may have been a year older. Uh, how old are you? Can you put out the number? I'm 43. 43. I think Chris Dickerson was also 43 when he won the competition. So hopefully some of our historians out there will determine if you are the oldest to actually win the contest for the first time. How many more years? I'll be back. I'm going to leave it at that. <laughs> well, I, I do want to just... Um, Put some perspective for you, if I could, before I let you run. The Olympia Winners Club is the most prestigious club in this sport. Arnold Schwarzenegger, Sergio Oliva, Dorian Yates, the Ronnie Coleman's, Jake Cutler's. You are Phil Heath. You are in that club. No matter what happens for you going forward, no matter what happens to you for the rest of your life, you are forever a Mr. Olympia champion. Pick up that Sandow trophy and show the world what you have just done. Remarkably, extraordinarily, impressively, and well-deserved. Sean Roden, your 2018 Mr. Olympia champion. Any final thoughts before you get out of here and go eat? Just want to thank my family for putting up with me the last couple of weeks. <laughs> uh, you know, I miss my family, you know, training in L.A., you know, my coach, Chris Aceto and Psycho Fitness, thank you guys so much for continuing to believe in me when everybody else stopped. And then there were 14. Sean Roden, congratulations, our newly crowned Olympia champion. I think that's going to wrap things up here from Las Vegas at the Orleans Arena. Our coverage of Joe Weider's Olympia weekend has now come to an incredible close with the crowning of a new champion. They often say in this sport of bodybuilding, the most memorable nights are the nights where a champion is crowned for the very first time. And Sean Roden, thanks to you, you have given us that moment. For all of us here, we appreciate the hard work of Robin Chang and everybody over at the Olympia production team, our director, Luz Wick, my co-hosts, Amanda Latona and Hall of Famer, Sean Ray. 
for our newly crowned champion, Sean Roden. I'm Dan Solomon. Good night.